Hey guys, welcome to the Bin Zone. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Netflix original series, The Umbrella Academy, breaking down the first season, the characters, the overarching plot, the powers, to get more details and more information on this great Netflix show. So without further ado, let's just jump into the plot line. Now the plot of Umbrella Academy is this. On October 1st, 1989, 43 women gave birth around the world simultaneously, despite at the start of that day, none of these women were pregnant, so these miraculous births were spread around the world and we have this eccentric billionaire named Reginald Hargraves who flew around the world trying to get as much of these children as possible and he was able to get his hands on seven of them. Now once Reginald acquires these seven kids, he begins to train them religiously and arduously to become superheroes and he forms his own superhero team, the Umbrella Academy. Now what's very interesting about this is while Reginald went around the world and got seven kids, only six of them were a part of the Umbrella Academy and that's because the seventh one, Vanya, was deemed ordinary, or so we thought. But before we get too deep into that, we have to understand a few things about these characters. First of all, Reginald trained them and he was very strict and very hard on them to the point where he did not even give them names. He just named them their numbers, one through seven. So these characters themselves blossomed into their own characters and gave themselves names. So before we dive deeper into the elements of the story, let's break down the characters and their abilities, starting off with number one, Luther Hargraves. Now number one's power is pretty straightforward. He's super strong. Think of Mr. Incredible. He has the super strength and he is the leader of the group and he is the number one of the Umbrella Academy, hence number one leader. Anyway, his power is basic, super strength and through, later in life, he suffers a horrific accident and Reginald Hargraves actually injects them with monkey DNA and makes his upper body even more strong and makes them half human, half monkey because his whole upper torso and arms are gorilla-like. So that is his ability. He's stoic. He has super strength and he's basically the level-headed leader, the nice guy, the typical, prototypical superhero, if you will. Now, moving on to number two. Number two is Diego Hargraves. Now, Diego's powers are projectile manipulation. Now, what I mean by that is Diego is able to throw any object and manipulate and change their direction. His preferred methods are knives because since a young age, Reginald trained them with knives. Diego is able to throw a knife, curve it, and flip it around in any direction he wants. Similar to how in the movie Wanted, they were able to curve bullets, but Diego can curve anything he wants. Um, pretty basic power, so we're going to move on to number three, Alison Hargraves. Now, now, Alison herself has the power to manipulate people's thoughts. For example, she's similar to the character from Jessica Jones, the purple man, when he tells you to do something, you do it or you believe it. So she has a latent power of hypnosis, mental manipulation. Now that power in itself is a very interesting one because the ability to change what people think and tell them what to do is a phenomenal ability to have. Moving on to number four. For number four, we have Klaus Hargraves. Now, Klaus' power is a little weird and a kind of strange. Like Klaus himself, his power is the ability to communicate with the dead. Now, he can see ghosts, they can talk to him, but no one else around him can see him. And we see as the series progressed, his powers evolved similar to how number five's power evolved. So we see that these are their base powers. Number one, for example, became more monkey-like, more strong. So we saw Cloud's power evolve from just being able to communicate with the dead and to the point where they can actually interact with him to the point where he can actually conjure them up similar to a necromancer. So that is a pretty neat ability because now he can solve almost any mystery and he can have the dead help him out in certain scenarios. It's just the fact that Klaus himself, while one of my favorite characters, isn't the most focused or hell-bent on being a hero. So that's kind of the trade-off. You have a, a weird power and a weird dude. Moving on to number five, who is arguably the most powerful and most gifted of the Umbrella Academies. Number five never got a name because number five went missing before he actually gave himself a name. So number five has been gone for 17 years. And when he reappears, he reappears as a boy while everyone else is an adult. However, number five lived until the age of 58 until he finally brought himself back because number five's ability is the ability to move through space and time. Yes, he can time travel and he can teleport and he teleported himself 
way into the future and he had to live his life alone in the future. So that's why he comes in and he is a pivotal plot point in this series because he sees the apocalypse and the end of the world and he came back in time, found a way to come back in time in order to warn his brothers and sisters and for them to come with a way to stop the impending apocalypse. So number five's power is space and time travel essentially, teleporting and traveling back in time. Pretty OP power, right? Moving on to number six, Ben Hargraves. Now, number six is a particularly weird case because Ben himself died before he fully matured into an adult like the rest of them. So Ben died and we don't know the real cause, but I'm assuming Ben died in a mission. That's why the team disbanded because there were kids going on some pretty horrific missions and of course you're gonna lose kids especially with Ben's type of powers Ben's powers is octopus tentacle rapey things right like he can conjure up like these octopodic octopus hands and just essentially become a kraken and his ability was very useful in taking on multiple abilities his ability was very useful in taking on multiple opponents at once and it was pretty devastating and bloody and gruesome which kind of played into Ben's psychological well-being in the show because imagine from a young age you have this tentacle monster ability just killing people and with the way Reginald raised these guys they had no real loving father figure besides a robot that Reginald created to watch them so you can see how psychologically it probably got to Ben and that cost him his life potentially. And moving on to number seven, Vanya. Vanya, for the majority of the series, was ordinary. No powers, boring, the girl next door, the cast aside, like they went on missions, they didn't even include number seven. And that's because we were led to believe she had no powers. However, we come to find out that she may have been the most powerful of the Umbrella Academy and Reginald could not control her. So that's where one of the major plot points come in. Reginald has number three, Allison, tell Vanya that she is ordinary from a young age, about four years old, way back when, so none of them actually remember this happening because they were four years old. How many things can you remember from the age of four? So she went through her whole life being miserable and ordinary and cast aside and shunted by her amazing extraordinary family. And it isn't until the final two episodes of the series we come to realize that Vanya may have been the most powerful member of the Umbrella Academy. And for years of being ostracized and being pushed aside by her family, she revolts and she is essentially the cause of the apocalypse. And that's because of Reginald's ways. Reginald was eccentric. He adopted these guys, but he was not a loving father. He was stern and he kind of he kind of kept them all at an arm's distance from himself. That way he could better control them and manage their abilities while not giving them the proper nurturing environment to grow up to be fully functional human beings because they're all kind of messed up in their own way and that is what causes Vanya once she develops her powers and her siblings are afraid of her she sees that as jealousy from them because they always shunted her they're always the cool guys the umbrella academy the heroes they were they were those dudes they were that guy or that girl they were on top of the world and she was just over here and now that she has all this sauce all this power they're afraid of her and they try to lock her up and that's when she becomes the white violin now Vanya's powers is interesting because we call her the white violin because that's the name of her character in the comics but don't worry I'm not gonna be going too deep into the comics we'll just focus mainly on the series but her power is the ability to convert sound into energy destructive energy and we come to find out that Vanya is the actual cause of the apocalypse because she had so much pent up energy from a concert that she did she destroyed the effing moon right and the moon came crashing down on earth and that's what causes the apocalypse which is insane if you think about it and that kind of shows you the overarching power that she has and it kind of justifies Reginald for being afraid of her because she brought down the moon my guy like that is insane in itself a few of the prominent characters in the show are Cha Cha and Hazel. These guys are like time police and they're hunting number five down because he's trying to stop the apocalypse. And the company that number five used to work for, this organization, are like the time police where they make sure events that are supposed to happen, happen. And the apocalypse is supposed to happen. However, number five wants to stop it. So they send their best agents, Cha Cha and Hazel, to stop him. 
and Cha Cha and Hazel are amazing characters because I just like the dynamic between them. We have Hazel who's getting disillusioned with the company and we have Cha Cha who is a real go-getter and she wants to do her job and get back home and that is to stop number five and let the apocalypse happen. Which brings us to the main focal point and driving force of the series and that is number five trying to stop the apocalypse. Now that we have established who the characters are and the plot, the characters were raised by Red, they were found by Reginald Knight they were found by Reginald and they became the Umbrella Academy. And once they became and established themselves as a superhero team, 17 years later, we come to find out that Reginald is dead and the team has disbanded. With the only one who is still loyal is number one because you know he's the goody two shoes of the group. They come together to their father's funeral. And it's at that moment number five comes out and they haven't seen number five in about 17 years. And he's still in his kid body and he ex explains the overarching end of the world. But these guys have a, such a functional family that they all have their own relationship issues and their own problems within each other to actually focus on the bigger threat at hand which is the apocalypse. So number five takes it upon himself to try to stop it while the others squabble and figure out their own family dynamic and how they're going to work that out. While number five is doing this the organization is after him and they kind of catch his family in the crossfire and that's what really unites the team to try to stop the apocalypse because the end of the world is a serious matter and they only have a few days to do it. So as they're going about this, Vanya is being manipulated by a character named Leonard Peabody, also known as Harold Jenkins. And that's because Leonard himself was born on the same day as the Umbrella Academy and he had an abusive father who did not love him because when Leonard was born, his mother died in the process. So the father kind of shunted him and abused him. So when Leonard tried to join the Umbrella Academy, like I said, Reginald Hargraves is a hard ass and he's like, you're an ordinary dude, get the fuck out of here, you can't join us, you're lame, you're a loser, get out of here. And that snaps something in Leonard and he kills his father, goes to jail and comes out 17 years later and that's when he tries to manipulate Vanya in order to take down the Umbrella Academy because they did not accept him for who he is. And he is the catalyst that pushes Vanya to discover her powers and it is with her discovery of her powers that she destroys the moon and does what she does and ends the world. Now, an interesting thing to take from this is that the world is ended, however, we see that the way it ended is different than when it ended the first time from number five. So that goes to show that some things can be changed. So at the end of the show and the season finale, we see that number five takes his siblings, even Vanya, and he teleports them to a different time because they're gonna try to find a different way to stop the apocalypse or live their life because the apocalypse and things in time they come to see is destined to happen unless they can do things differently. So they got a new lease on life and they're able to time travel to the past a different time period in order to redo everything and save the world because again they are a superhero team and saving the world is the most important thing to superhero teams. Even though they're dysfunctional, even though they don't work, even though Reginald Hargrave is a terrible father and a terrible leader, an organizer of a team, these guys are family and they see each other as brothers and sisters and they don't want to live in a world where the world is ended for one and their brothers and sisters are also dead. So that leaves us with the ending of season one where they're going to go back in time and try to rehabilitate Vanya as well as save the world because Vanya herself even though she's the cause of the end of the world, all her issues are understandable. The way she was treated by her siblings, her father, and overall by society because she comes from a family of eccentric billionaires and superpowered beings and she spent the most 30 years of her life an ordinary loser and shunted by everybody and therefore she needs that embrace of family and that familial love in order for her to get to where she needs to be to be a vital member of the Umbrella Academy while also not destroying the world. Anyway guys, that's season one of Umbrella Academy. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the show. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Is there anything in the series you'd like for me to explain? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, definitely the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button so you can get more videos from the bin zone. Check out this sweet merch. And let me know in the comment section below if you guys want a link to these merchandise and you can buy it and support the channel. I'd really appreciate that. And guys, until next time, binge on.